and welcome to Living the Word here on Revelation TV this Monday evening. So glad that you can join us for this program where we aim to help you not just read the Word but to live the Word. And tonight we are talking about a very practic practical principle. I knew I was going to stumble over that. And it's talking about hospitality. We've entitled the program Pursuing the Practice of Hospitality because the Bible says a lot about this. So we're going to take a look at what it is and practically how we can apply that into our life. And I say we, because as always, I'm thankful to say I am joined by Aidy. Good oh, evening. Oh, thankful to say. I am. <laughs> I'm always thankful that you're oh, by my side. Lovely. No, no, no. It's a, it's a good topic. It's yeah. going to be an interesting one, I think. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And as always, we are live and interactive. So if you want to get involved in the program this evening, I'd encourage you to get your messages in early because this program does fly by. So you can email live at revelationtv.com or you can text the number on your screen. Maybe you're a hospitable person. Maybe you like to have people over. Maybe it's for house groups or just to have friends and family around for food. Maybe it's something that you're in an area that you struggle in and you want to be open and honest today and, and maybe ask, how do we do this? Or maybe you've got some scriptures that you'd like to share with us. Whatever you want to get involved in the program and say about hospitality, you'd be welcome to do so. And I think some people do struggle with it. I think oh, yeah. some people have, it's a natural thing that they're hospitable people people, it's a gift that God's given them. Mm -hmm. Others might struggle, but it is a principle that Bible says it's not just for those who it comes naturally to, yeah. it's for all of us mm -hmm. to love one another, to show the love of Jesus to one another. Mm -hmm. And I did just want to start off, there's a quote by an author called Jane Jarrell, which says this, you might not feel like you're gifted or talented in the area of hospitality. It doesn't matter. God wants to use you, but he doesn't require you to change who you are. And I think that's amazing that who we are, how God created us to be, he wants us to be hospitable. And today we're going to talk about what exactly that means. Yeah, and that's, that's it. It's We can't be anybody apart from ourselves. Mm. So um, we will tend to gravitate towards people who are like us. So we talk about hospitality and most people probably think throwing their house open, doing a meal, um, having people round, um, all of those kinds of things, you know, like special occasions, um, doing a birthday or doing Christmas or whatever. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. We can be hospitable without even inviting anybody into our home mm. because we can be hospitable by um, going to a coffee shop with somebody or saying, well, um, your kids are playing in the park. Can I sit on the bench with you? It's more about opening ourselves up to other people than it is necessarily opening up, say, our home. Mm. Um, we can be hospitable in different ways. Definitely. So if you're struggling with, especially if you don't think your home is big enough or you don't think your home is good enough, which some people might feel that way, then you can do it elsewhere. Have a picnic with another mum from the school. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's the basic foundation is serving someone, isn't yeah. it? And, and showing love, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And what I think is a key point, because you say they're hospitable, I, I'm going to struggle with this word because I'm, I'm trying to say hospitable and hospitality Hospitality at the same time. Yeah. But like you say, it is throwing open your home mm. seems to be the way it's done. And in my research, I come across the fact that being hospitable and entertaining are two completely different yeah. things. Because when you're entertaining people, when you're inviting the family over, yeah. or you're inviting friends around to do a meal, it's all about the host in a way. It's all about, oh, how nice the food's gonna be, or, oh, we're getting the posh cutlery out, and how pristine and clean the house is, and it's all gonna look perfect. And it reminds me of the story of Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. because Martha was in that mindset. In the biblical times, hospitality was very important. It was part of their culture. It's part of their identity to serve people and to make sure they felt comfortable and fed and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So that's where Martha's head was. Yeah. She was like, it's got to look perfect. It's got to, all the food's got to be out on time. Jesus is here. It's got to be amazing. Yeah. Whereas Mary was the complete opposite. She realized the importance of Jesus's presence there mm -hmm. to listen to what he had to say. Yeah. So when we are being hospitable and we are bringing people into our homes, mm -hmm. it's not about how it all looks. It's not about how good the food is. Mm -hmm. It's about the people that you're inviting in. It's about realizing they have have a need, being sensitive to their need, listening to them. And even if your house is a mess, mm -hmm. even if you haven't tidied up in a few days and haven't cleaned the house, yeah. if there's someone that you know that's struggling and they're saying, I'm feeling a bit lonely, I'm feeling a bit down, invite them around for a coffee. That's all yeah. it needs to be. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate like entertaining would no. be. No. And there's 
we can do all of those things. And I guess this is the difference between normal hospitality and biblical hospitality mm -hmm. is you can do all of those things, um, but there might be a different agenda behind it. It's kind of, oh, we'll have the Joneses round on Saturday because then we know in a couple of months time, they're going to have to invite us back. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that quid pro quo, is it? The phrase that I'm looking for. But with biblical hospitality, it's about the love and the fact that we can give it away without expecting anything in return literally nothing in return it's just i want to love on you i want to do something for yeah. you yeah yeah and there's actually a scripture in romans that i'm going to read in a moment but under the it comes under the heading of love in action and it talks about hospitality in this so it's romans 12 verses 9 to 13 and it says love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in love Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. And right there, it's got love one another above yourselves. Serve people and serve the Lord's people who are in need. Um, patient in affliction and I think we'll come on to that shortly as well about them times as you kind of mentioned birthdays Christmases weddings when you're around family members that might be a little bit difficult or it might be work people that you have to certain people you might need to pray for a bit more patience with it's it's sometimes difficult to be in them situations <laughs> with them people but that's what the biblical hospitality is all about is serving one another and loving one another even if they don't deserve it even if they don't deserve it a little bit further on in that passage it talks talks about rejoicing with those who are rejoicing and mourning with those who are mourning. So it's also paying attention to where people are at. Um, you know, if you've got a friend who's just got a job and you want to celebrate with them, fantastic. But don't invite somebody who might have just lost their job to the same celebration. Mm -hmm. It's being in touch with um, what's going on in people's lives. And when you're being hospitable, you build relationships. And that's, that's part of it as well. It's part of growing the body and getting to know one another that much deeper through spending time together. Mm, definitely, definitely. And, and like I mentioned, it can be difficult mm. in times like that. But you actually sent over a scripture. I always ask AD some scriptures. And, and when I read it, it comes from Matthew. Mm -hmm. And I would have thought you were going to do the top part because the mm -hmm. top part is all about Jesus saying, when you, you fed the hungry, you, yep. you served me and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> actually, talking about. you went to the part, the, the, the bit that really hits you. And I was like, oh, she, she picked a doozy there, as you would say. So do you want to read it and then explain why you it. picked that part? Yeah. I think it's interesting. So it's Matthew 25, 42 to 46. And it says, For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison? and did not help you. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Now, the first part, that's the bit we want to be in. Yeah. We want to be in the righteous bit. But we have to remember that we can't just blinker our eyes to other people around us. When it says in the Bible to love your neighbor, when it says to love those around you, that means um, children loving the kid that's being bullied in the playground, um, loving your Muslim neighbor, even though you, you don't have the same religion, um, loving the illegal immigrant because you don't know why they're there, not making assumptions as to why people are in certain situations, but seeing them as people of that God has created. They may not be fellow Christians like you are, but they are still people that God has created. And when we can open ourselves up to that, and when we can open ourselves up and see people that are hurting, that are hungry, that might just need to talk, even though they might be from another religion, you never know, you may be saying exactly the right thing to them at exactly the right time. You may be giving them the love that they need, 
that they're not getting from elsewhere. So we have opportunities when we're prepared to open our eyes and love those that the world probably doesn't want mm -hmm. to. And it's so true to actually take your perspective of seeing them as a human in a sense and yeah. think, I'm serving Christ by helping this person. Jesus didn't exclude anyone. Yeah. He came for everyone and mm -hmm. whoever came to him and asked for help or seek yeah. wisdom or whatever, he spent time with. So as Christians, as followers of Christ, that's what we need to be doing yeah. is not to judge their situation, yeah. but think this person is, needs something mm -hmm. and I, through helping them, can show the love of Christ as well. And when I was doing my research, there was actually a few testimonies that came up about the fact that there might have been people who were non-believers or a different religion or whatever but they encountered a Christian who showed hospitality and that just completely changed their mindset and actually brought them to Christ. Then I've got a list of, it. I've, I've written a heading, the effects hospitality can have on people. When we show love demonstrated through hospitality, it can be the key that unlocks the pathway into their heart. And when we show a sacrificial kindness, mm -hmm. It, it might be to someone who's hurt us or it might be someone who's difficult to love, but actually when we show that love, yeah. it might harden their heart. It might make them think about the way that they've been behaving and, and bring them to Christ as well. So that's important. Um, when those who are feeling lonely or isolated, as I mentioned earlier, if someone's saying they're feeling a bit down, mm -hmm. to, to bring them in, it can be a valuable gift to help them integrate into society, um, to fellowship with other Christians and make connections and make friends as well. And even just acknowledging someone yeah. walking down the street or acknowledging someone at church, whatever, just giving them a smile or a hello, that's all part of being hospitable as well. Exactly. Just greeting somebody with a smile, just um, greeting somebody with, you're not looking yourself today, um, is being hospitable. It's, it's that opening ourselves up. It's not being all closed down like we can be. We, we live in a world that moves so fast. I mean, if you've ever been to London, it's like everybody's on a track desperately trying to get somewhere. Goodness knows where they're all going. But they're desperately trying to get there and as quickly as humanly possible. And nobody makes a smile, nobody touch, And it's all so very, very fast. And just to be able to stop and look and open yourself up and go, I see you. That's hospitality. That's telling somebody, I've seen enough to know that I need to reach out to you. Yeah, and that goes to show that we can be hospitable in our every normal day. Yeah. It's not just about them events. It's not, not about, about hosting or inviting someone around to stay over or whatever if they need it. It's, it's in our every day. And when we do that, when we show that love and it softens their heart, mm -hmm. in turn, they will end up softening someone else's heart. This is how we make disciples of all nations. It's not about trying to get, yes, we want to try and reach as many people yeah. as we can, but when we reach individual people, and as you say, really see them and really show love to them and they receive that love and they receive Jesus, yeah. that then gives them the motivation and heart to go and do that for someone else. And then it's a knock-on effect. And then that's how we spread the gospel. Exactly. And then one says to another, says to another. And before you know it, it's, it's getting out there. Um, so it's in ancient times being hospitable was really important because if you were out and you weren't invited into somebody's tent, it could be the difference between life and death. Um, but spiritually, this is no different. If we don't open ourselves up as Christians to others who are hurting, is, it, is there the potential for life or death? Because if we're not opening ourselves up and showing Jesus's love and showing it practically, um, then they're not going to get the message and they're, they're dying without hearing the gospel. That's true. And so it's, it hasn't really changed. That is still there. If we don't invite people in, if we don't open ourselves up, then we're basically saying, no, 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 you, you take care of yourself out there in the desert. Mm. And that's why as a church, mm -hmm. not just, a, we, we did a program on this before yeah. about the church being the people or the building and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But as individual churches, yeah. we need to be getting out there rather than being exclusive and think, right, well, these are the people we're here. These are the people we're going to focus on. Hospitality is also as a church getting out there and speaking to people. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important as individuals to do that. But as a community and corporately as well, we can reach a lot more people if we're out there in unity together, inviting them to our services, inviting them to house groups and yeah. different events that we're doing. It's not just about 
yes, it's important to shepherd them people yeah. that we do have, but we want to see the kingdom of God grow and we want them to have eternal life with us and as we well. can take it to them. We can take it to them in doing mother and talk groups. Mm. We can take it to them by opening up our churches and saying, we're going to do a coffee morning. If you're lonely, if you're cold, if there's something that you, if you just need to see a friendly face, come down and have a coffee. We can open ourselves up in that way without it having to be, I don't like the phrase, but a holy huddle. Mm. It, we don't need to be that. We don't all need to be Christians together. We need to spread ourselves out a little bit. Definitely. We're well, talking about community. We are live and interactive and we've had an email here from Philip in Lincolnshire. He says, hi, Nikki and AD. Great work that you're doing. Thank you. Uh, I've always believed in being a good host and hospitable, being helpful and welcoming people with a cheerful heart in any way possible that you can, be it at home, work, church and when out and about since you don't know who you are meeting, helping or caring for. The Bible verse below confirms that and it's Hebrews 13 too. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entangled, entertained angels without realising it. God mightily bless you all from Philip. Thank you, Philip. And it's true, isn't it? We, like we said, it's not just for Christians. It's not just for church or people that we know or people that we love. We have to be showing hospitality to everyone who we come in contact with. Yeah. And as you said earlier, it can be difficult at times. You know, when we have those times where we've, we're thrown into a situation where we're suddenly bumping into Auntie Maud, who the last time we saw her, she had firm words for us because she didn't like the way that we did our hair. Those situations can come up all over the place. Um, but it's about going in there with an open heart and going in there wanting to love you know auntie maud might still not like your hairstyle <laughs> but <laughs> she's still auntie maud and we still need to love her exactly. so it's being open and having strategies i think sometimes is really mm. helpful when you're in those situations you know if you're there with somebody, have have a trigger word that says, I'm not coping with this very well, because you don't want to upset your own mental health either. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can have just like a trigger word or something where they know that it's time to change the subject, it's time to get you away from this particular person, or, you know, just to watch over you. Or you just take a couple of minutes out. If you're hosting... The kitchen is a wonderful place because I just need to go and check on something. You ain't checking on anything, yeah. <laughs> but you're just going and checking on yourself yeah. to make sure yeah. that you can have a word with yourself so you can get through the rest of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're not meant to be thrown together with lots of people for long periods of time. And sometimes we will struggle. And another point that comes to mind as you say that is if you're the one hosting, don't feel like all the pressure's on you and you've got to do it all. If it's a Christ-centred thing that you're doing, firstly, God's given you the strength to do it anyway. If you've prayed beforehand and said, God, you give me the words and the opportunity and if I'm opening my home, you bring the right people in. So firstly, God is with you. Secondly, have that support network. Have other people come alongside you and help whether it's putting the food out or, or whatever, or just to be there as a support with that yeah. trigger word or whatever. Don't feel like you have to do it all on your own and it's all on your shoulders because God is with you. He sees your heart and he sees, if, if your motive is to serve others yeah. and not to be like the pride thing, oh, look at me, I've done a wonderful job. Isn't my house lovely? And showing everybody <laughs> around. If you're there to really love others, yeah. then God will honour that and God will give you the words. And just to, on, on this subject of it being difficult around difficult people, you know, one Peter... 4 verses 8 to 10 it talks about uh, it says above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins offer hospitality to one another without grumbling each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms and I said it like that because in my notes I had done it in red I was like without grumbling because yeah. it's nature our human sinful nature to want to grumble oh auntie Maud's here again she's gonna yeah. say something bad about my hair <laughs> but if you get into that mindset of no i'm gonna love auntie Maud no matter what that she is still a child of god and i am serving christ by treating her well get yourself into that mindset before she's even arrived yeah. and then hopefully you'll be all right <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> or ask Mum to keep Auntie Maud away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, yeah. Well, of course, this is a practical programme and we've mm -hmm. talked a lot about some of the practical things we can do if it gets overwhelming and how change your mindset and stuff. Um, We've talked about the fact of doing house groups and church things, which is a popular thing. But like I say, pray for that opportunity yeah. to be hospitable because there's always someone that you can, like we say, acknowledge, give a smile to, invite to coffee. Like you say, it doesn't have to be in your own home. Yeah. You might want to say, do you want me to come to yours? It might be easier and they might feel more comfortable in their environment yeah. for you to go to their house as well. And, and saying that when you do invite people in, make it a comfortable place for them. If it is all pristine and clean, and you don't want them to use anything, they're going to feel very, oh, I yeah. don't want to move. I mean, when you have house groups, I come round, take my shoes off, I'm sitting on the sofa <laughs> with my legs crossed, like I'm by myself right at home. And it, that's, a, that's an it. open welcome home. It's supposed home. to be a home. Yeah. It's supposed to be somewhere where you can come. And that's what's really important about Christian homes. They need to be welcoming. Mm. They need to be also safe places yes. for um, both physically and emotionally. And if we can open up our homes so that those who ha maybe haven't felt safe in their own homes or don't feel safe in their own homes, to be around people where they can feel both physically and emotionally safe. Mm. Um, that's really important because that's when people's guards go down and we can reach people once their guard goes down because when they've got all of the armour on, mm. you can't get through. But when they can see that you truly love them, when they can see that whatever they come and they talk to you about, it's said in confidence, it's not halfway around the church within three days, um, that you are then checking in on them to make sure that they're okay. When they feel supported in that way with your hospitality, that's when you can really make a difference in someone's mm -hmm. life. Definitely, and that's powerful. And, and the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, it comes quite naturally to some people mm -hmm. to be able to do that. God has given them that, that grace and that sensitivity and, and to be able to do that. But even Jesus himself said for all of us to be doing this, to be hospitable. And in Luke 14, verses 12 to 14, it, it, uh, it, uh, <laughs> it accounts his words of what he said. It said, then Jesus said to his hosts, when you give a lunch or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbours. If you do, they might invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And it's like you mentioned earlier, we don't do it to get something in return. We're doing it because we're showing love. We're doing it because we're being obedient to God. We're doing it because we see a need in people's lives and we want to meet that need, not for our own blessing and our own glory, it's to love others. And, and we are blessed that the Bible talks about we will have rewards in heaven and God sees what we do and we'll be rewarded then. But we don't show hospitality in in order to get it back because that's not the right heart motive. No, but we do get a blessing um, if we do it properly because it takes our focus off ourselves, puts our focus on somebody else and that helps to combat our natural selfish nature. Mm. So in practicing this, it builds our ability to take our eyes off ourselves and to put our eyes on other people. And the more we do it, the less we're going to focus on us and the less we're going to focus on our problems or what's going on in our life because we'll be too busy focusing on other people. Definitely. And it's it's being OK with that inconvenience sometimes yep. in our life. We might have a plan. We might be going somewhere. We might be in London and we'll be in a rush. We've got yep. to catch that train because we've <laughs> got to get there. But there might be someone calls you up and goes, yeah. can you come visit me or can you come do this and and that's okay if, if it's nothing important that you're going to sometimes if you've prayed for that opportunity to be hospitable and then God gives you that opportunity and you're like oh no but I need to get the train to where I'm going then you've missed that opportunity to receive that blessing to build up your faith to get closer to God and to help someone that really needs help as well hospitality can have happen on the street mm. you can be walking down the street and you might bump into somebody who you haven't seen for ages but God has orchestrated that so that you are going to be the person that bumps into them that you're going to be the person that says how are you doing today and that they might be in a place where they're going to say to you actually it's not so great and you've got a choice there you can carry on with whatever you're you were doing with your day and assuming it's not anything important you have an opportunity to go shall we go and have a coffee come tell me about it 
uh, let's go somewhere. Let's even just go and sit in the park. Let's go and sit in the park and watch the birds or watch the people and the, and the children and let's pray about it. Yeah. But you can open yourself up. It doesn't always have to be a premises. You just open yourself up mm -hmm. to being hospitable okay. to people. And sometimes people worry, oh, but I, I won't have the right words. I won't know what to say. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Uh, <clears> like you say, listen. It's, listen. And just your presence, just mm -hmm. being there so that they don't feel like they're on their own. Yeah. Like you say, even if it's just in the park looking at God's creation yeah. and you're just sat with someone, Mm -hmm. and it might take time for them to feel like they can open up and, and to say something but you will be doing something just by being in their presence yeah. and, and whether you pray out loud for them or in your mind prayer is powerful as well so that's Amen. a key point Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Well, we've got two more minutes left. I'm going to squeeze in one of the scriptures that you you sent me and see if you can Go explain it in two minutes. It's Psalms 23, 5 to 6, which says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's example. Amen. God's example to us is that he prepares a table for us um, and invites us right in front of our enemies, mm. right in front of all of those people that are saying, oh, but you don't deserve that. Right in front of all of that, not only does he prepare a table, he anoints us, he invites us in and he says that you are going to be with me forever. Now, that's our example to invite in those who are broken, those who are rejected, those who feel on the outskirts, those who feel like they just don't fit in. That is our example because that's what God does for us. Amen. Beautiful way to end the program. And I love the fact that God never asks us to do anything that he's not prepared to do for himself. Same with Jesus. He's asking us to invite people into our hearts and to love one another. And that's exactly what he did. He came as our example. Yeah. And we are so blessed that we have the scriptures to see them examples. And the scriptures talk about practically how to do these things. Yeah. And that's what being a Christian is all about. That's why we do this program because it's not just about reading the Bible. It's doing it. Yes, the Bible is great because it's the guideline and the map for life. We get to know Jesus and the character of Jesus, but then he wants us to apply that into our lives. So, AD, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching. We really hope you've been inspired and blessed today on how to pursue the practice of hospitality. God bless you. We will be back here on Revelation TV, same time next week. See you then.